Good afternoon, fellow classmates. My name is Octavio Gomez, and I'm going to be presenting about the notion of religion. Uh, there's no other aspect of human life that is more essential to social cohesion and self-identity than the notion of religion itself. Uh, you know, religion allows individuals of all different backgrounds to unite under a creed and to find purpose in their personal lives. Um, I'll personally be discussing the establishment and the hindering of religion by the government. Uh, this phenomenon has been uh, kind of a mainstay uh, within this current political climate with our current president-elect talking about uh, things like a Muslim registry and some of his surrogates saying that there's uh, you know, a precedent for that in the Korematsu case uh, back in World War II. Uh, and even uh, to politicians just stating in general that maybe we should uh, go back to our Christian roots as a nation. Uh, but I believe that we need to ask ourselves if the imposition of such a registry should be considered unconstitutional, uh, or should this nation be able to uh, enact legislation that even has you know, direct religious connotations. Uh, thankfully, I don't think we need to reach these conclusions ourselves, uh, but you know, in our Constitution and inter interpretations rendered by Supreme Court justices in the past um, uh, can tell us a great deal of uh, you know, what actions are appropriate uh, in cons uh, concerning, you know, uh, what's constitutional, what's not concerning religion. It is true uh, that over the past, however, that uh, uh, the relationship between church and state has been uh, kind of convoluted and not a very clear-cut one. Uh, but I believe, with a little understanding of, you know, the historical context in which the Constitution was written, uh, even uh, you know the articles of the Constitution themselves, what they you know, what they say about religion, what, uh, you know, what's in there about religion. And uh, also the precedents established uh, in, in some cornerstone ca cases, namely uh, the Lemon uh, versus Kurtzman case. Uh, and also, uh, at the end of this, I'd like to revisit the question of the constitutionality of a Muslim registry, and if we should maybe possibly go back to our Christian roots as a nation, or, you know, uh, maybe consider these issues again. Uh, so before I get into specifics of, you know, the constitutional mechanisms that are at work here uh, regarding religion, uh, you know, either towards the establishment or to, you know, the detriment of religion, I believe that it is of the utmost importance that we understand the context uh, in which our founding fathers wrote the Constitution. Um, I think oftentimes we hear that, um, you know, the founding fathers, they were fleeing uh, they were pilgrims that, you know, fled from religious persecution, but, you know, we never really uh, hear, like, what were they fleeing from? Like, what, what uh, religious institution were they running from? But, uh, you know, the Puritans in this particular time were actually uh, running away from a despotic amalgamation of church and state that was the Church of England or the Anglican Church. Um, and the head of this, large of this large church organization was actually the English crown. See, these, these individuals uh, endured persecution at the hands of a Christian organization that had a mass power in the political realm. Uh, and they, they, were, uh, they were fleeing more than just a Christian sect. Uh, and it, this was actually a Christian sect that had bonded with the government itself. So uh, this, this context is precedent for uh, you know, keeping government out of religion by itself. So uh, let's uh, see what um, the Founding Fathers actually wrote in the, in the Constitution itself. Um, in, uh, within the First Amendment, uh, the Establishment Clause states, uh, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Uh, this is known as the Establishment Clause, and it clearly states that, um, that Congress should not impose burdens or further the diverse objectives of religious institutions. Uh, you know, in light of, you know, the, the several burdens that the Anglican Church uh, placed on Americans in this particular point in time, uh, we can see that, uh, you know, how this, how this uh, clause itself gained its place uh, within our Constitution. Um, however, these statements uh, are pretty ambiguous because, like, who can say what respecting the establishment of religion means? or prohibiting uh, the free exercise of religion. Like, what, what do those concepts actually mean? And uh, I, I don't think that we need to come up with those ourselves, thankfully, uh, but because uh, you know, uh, uh, our Supreme Court justices in the past actually came to a decision uh, on what these mean 
in the cornerstone case of Lemon versus uh, Kurtzman. Uh, it, it kind of expands on uh, these ambiguous notions from the past. Uh, this was a Supreme Court case that happened in 1971, and uh, this case kind of establishes, although not with you know without its controversies like in recent times, uh, 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 J Justice Antonin Scalia he was very much against uh, this ruling, uh, but however uh, th this case was a challenge uh, actually to an act uh, that public school superintendents were reimbursing private schools uh, for sa for the salaries of their teachers. Uh, this uh, act itself was rendered unconstitutional because it, it, it uh, violated the Establishment Clause, um, which because it gave kind of uh, special treatment to Catholic churches. Um, this court decision uh, it, uh, created, uh, in a sense, what is now known today as the Lemon Test. Uh, the Lemon Test is a three-pronged test that lays out the groundwork uh, for what a, a, appropriate legislation that does not entangle itself with religion uh, basically entails and what it looks like. Uh, first and foremost, a statute must have a clear purpose. Uh, second, its primary or secondary effects must not inhibit uh, or further the goals of religion. And third, the statute must not uh, foster excessive uh, governmental entang entanglement with religion. So uh, returning to the question if whether or not a Muslim registry uh, imposed on uh, you know an entire religion uh, uh, we, we, uh, is constitutional, we don't need to look further than uh, than, the, than the precedent established in the Lemon case. But uh, le le we could also look at the Equal Protection Clause within the the Fourteenth Amendment that uh, uh, states this. <clears throat> The 14th Amendment uh, states, uh, states the following. Uh, no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of the law, nor deny uh, to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. See, so uh, basically aggregating the historical context of the Constitution uh, the First and Fourteenth Amendment that, you know, uh, the Fourteenth Amendment in this context uh, provides, uh, it provides yeah, equal protection of the laws, and if you're giving unequal treatment to, you know, uh, Muslim individuals, it's, it's pretty clearly unconstitutional. And also the fact that, you know, creating this re registry solely on the basis of religious affiliation without respecting uh, due process and giving all of these people, uh, you know, a proper trial and a, you know, a proper process to go through, uh, this would also inhibit religion in, in itself, and it would entangle itself in religious affairs. Uh, it, so it, it, it's, I, I don't even feel like I need to, you know, go any further, but th this notion is clearly unconstitutional. Uh, yes, there are, there are many principles uh, in theory that have you know, influenced our government that come from, you know, Christian values or, you know, other religious values. Uh, however, um, government involvement in religion itself has always seemed to uh, kind of develop these prejudices or favoritism, especially in the case of Christianity, since most uh, Christians in general are adherents to uh, the Christian faith. Um, I believe in an America where everyone uh, is free to choose to worship and not to be chastised and persecuted for that. And uh, the only way that that could happen is through the precedent established in the Lemon Test and offering equal, equal protections to all Americans, no matter what their background is. Right, thank you.